Welcome. Today's projects on those nasty anxiety sensations and symptoms you experience every day, struggling, battling with this health anxiety and anxiety. Now, anxiety manifests itself differently in everybody. I mean, people get agoraphobia, some people get catastrophic thoughts, some people get depersonalization, some people have high health anxiety, some people have medium to little health anxiety, and then some people have social anxiety, some people have panic attacks and so forth. So it manifests differently in each person. There's different levels, but they all come from the same anxiety system. So let's understand that system in this video so that you can look at your sensations and symptoms differently. Let's look on the other side of that coin because anxiety sufferers are looking at the coin from one side that this heart palpitation equals heart attack and problems with the heart, or clogged artery, or artery, a wide range of, of, of images come to a health anxiety sufferer's mind. So on that side of the coin, you know, shallow breathing equals lung cancer, or, or that pain in the side equals, you know, kidney disease. All of these things manifest itself into a health anxiety sufferer's mind. So let's talk about this anxiety system. The anxiety system is, is active, active when the amygdala produces that response, right? The fight, flight, or freeze response. So your sympathetic nervous system becomes active. Your amygdala has detected a threat in your environment. Our great ancestors hunting lions and, 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 and dinner back in the ancient times needed this system to work properly in order to protect themselves from danger. I mean, when they saw a dangerous predator, what happens? They fight or, or usually run, or they freeze, right? They, they, they stop it like a, a scared rabbit, you know, about to be eaten by something. That system needs to be working properly so that it keeps you alive. But in our modern world, there's not usually a predator cat, right? You know, it helps us when we're about to get mugged or when we're about to get hit by a car or, or protect ourselves at work. This system is, is useful, but with an anxiety sufferer, when this system is active every day, they're perceiving other little things as threats, but it's not little to them. It's massive to them. I mean, it could be uh, something in, in the environment that just triggers a past traumatic memory and that activates their system right? It's these little things. It's, it's psychological, but those, that psychological uh, reaction is so abstract, right? It varies from person to person. You know, it's usually th the same across everybody when it's a mugger try almost about to kill you or fight you or, or whether it's a snake or a predatory cat, whatever it is, you know, those are pretty universal. But for an anxiety sufferer, it's very specific to somebody, you know, what, 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 what's really causing the underlying emotional issues that are, are, are troubling that person suffering from health anxiety. So, so when your sympathetic nervous system, when your anxiety response is continuously active, that's not so good for your system. I mean, your system is running uh, so quickly and, and using up, burning all that fuel because your heart is racing. Your heart is pumping more oxygen to your limbs, to your legs and your arms so that you can flee, right? So let's understand that. When your heart is racing because of the activation of your anxiety response, an anxi a health anxiety sufferer can perceive that fast beating heart as something life threatening. That's psychological, right? Instead of them perceiving, oh, you know, I'm just stressed or I'm just anxious in this moment. They perceive that palpitation. They perceive that racing heart as something life threatening. Maybe I have a clogged artery. Maybe I ha I'm going to have a heart attack like my uncle had a heart attack or my grandpa 
grandpa had a heart attack or my dad, my brother, whoever it was, you know, maybe I'm going to end up like them or maybe I'm going to end up like this person on TV that I saw who had a heart attack and died, right? So like a wide range of catastrophic thoughts just pop up, accumulate in that person's imagination, right? And so they perceive, they only look at that one side of the coin rather than there's another side of that coin. And so they, they, when the anxiety response is active, your heart is working so that you can respond to that danger, right? Whether it's a bear or somebody with a knife or whether it's your imagination thinking about having a heart attack, it's all the same system. It's the same anxiety response. Then you're breathing shallow because your lungs are, are pumping more oxygen to your muscles so that you respond. That's why you feel that muscle tension when you're having anxiety or having that panic attack, right? Your, your muscles need to work properly in order to respond to that danger. So an anxiety sufferer may perceive their shallow breathing as, well, I might have lung cancer. You know, maybe I'm going to faint in this moment. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with my lungs and, you know, I'm, un, I'm unhealthy and, or whatever. There's a wide range of those images and, and thoughts, right, that go along with that sensation. Little do they know that it's just a natural bodily response. So you're breathing more shallow, but then what happens? Well, you're your anus and then your bladder tend to be more relaxed when you have high anxiety. And so people go to the bathroom a lot. And when people go to the bathroom a lot, they think that there's something wrong with their bladder. They think that there's something wrong inside. There's something wrong, seriously wrong inside, internally, right? When they're going to, going number two too much or, right? Because they're having irritable bowel syndrome. Right? So the anxiety response produces a lot of different uh, sensations and, and, uh, and symptoms. And so it's so easy for a health anxiety sufferer to perceive these symptoms and sensations as being something serious, seriously wrong with them, right? So the body also sweats and, and cools itself down by sweating. So you might be on the subway going to work and you might be sweating be like, oh my God, why am I sweating right now? People might think I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going crazy and uh, I'm nervous. People might think I'm weak because I'm nervous. And, and, it, 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 and a lot of the time, anxiety sufferers fear the judgment of other people. That's why they don't want to go out to that shopping mall. They don't want to go to their work. They don't want to go to their school because they, they're afraid of having that heart attack in front of other people and then being judged by those people. Uh, you you being crazy and weak and, and, and a loser and, and an outcast, right? You don't want to stand out in front of all of these people. And that stems way, way back in our evolution in our history right i mean back then when we were in tribes you know if you were an outcast that equals death that equals death i mean it, like if you're not part of a tribe if you're not part of a group how are you going to survive on your own you're going to hunt alone you're going to make shelter alone and and that equals isolation and death i mean look at animals for example bees and and fish cod for example they live in schools bees work together to to live and thrive properly and if you one bee is alone how long is that bee going to last for? It's not going to last very long. Like, what is one bee going to do? What is one cod going to do? They, they all are together. So it's that fear of in, 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 a, in a human being where if they are rejected from, from society because of how they're acting and, and, and behaving, then that equals death to them. They perceive that as the end-all be-all. So that's also fearful, the, the eyes of others judging them. And that's, that was serious for me when I was going through health anxiety. That was manifesting itself unconsciously within me, 
right? I was afraid of being around other people and, and, and fainting or having a, that heart attack or, or having that panic attack and, and, and being embarrassed. I was afraid of that. It was horrifying to me. And I remember one time when I was at school at, in a workshop having a panic attack while I was sitting there in the classroom and I was just afraid of people judging me right in that moment. I was, I was thinking, oh my God, these kids m must think I'm such a weirdo right now because I'm sweating. You know, I, I can't sit still. I'm having this panic attack. I can't really breathe properly. And they must think I am just this crazy person. And then I felt like an outcast in that moment. So you can see from this video that, you know, anxiety just blows up and, and the, those catastrophic images just blow up in a health anxiety sufferer's mind right? So let's go back to the anxiety response. So your sympathetic nervous system is active, producing all of these bodily, bodily symptoms, heart palpitations, um, sweating, uh, tingly sensations in the hands and the feet. So there's all of those sensations going on. And when your parasympathetic nervous system is, is not active, you're, you're going to feel nausea. Right? The parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest. So that's when you can digest food properly. That's when your body is relaxed and, and, and your, your, your muscles are relaxed. But when your sympathetic nervous system is active, your, your, your body's working on overtime. It's, it's pumping so much gas and, and excreting so much gas that... It, you're 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 ready to go man and if that's active all the time you're just going to burn yourself out and if you're going through anxiety then you're going to feel like you're you're burnt out way too often and that's because of that system being continuously active and you may feel nausea when you have anxiety because there's not enough blood traveling to your stomach, right? And so when your parasympathetic nervous system is active, you can digest food properly. That's no problem. You feel fine. But when your sympathetic nervous system is active, you're going to feel nausea. You're going to feel sick. You might feel like throwing up because there's not, there's, well, why am I going to eat in a time of threat, right? You've, you're, you're reacting to something in your environment as being life-threatening, there's no time to eat food right now, so the blood is not going to your stomach. Your 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 rest and digest system is not working. Your your the body's preparing itself to stay safe. So that's why anxiety sufferers feel nauseous as well, and that's why when an anxiety sufferer is in a public environment, they're afraid and fearful of throwing up in front of other people, and then having those judgmental eyes just attack them so to speak, right? So let's go over the symptoms and sensations before I end this video so that we can understand what happens when our anxiety response is active. So heart palpitations, racing heart, shallow breathing, tingly sensations in the hands and feet, also the head, dizziness, um, which, which, happens a lot when somebody's experiencing depersonalization. There's also, also nausea, sweating, uh, diarrhea, constant urination, constant bathroom visits like I used to do. Uh, I thought something was wrong with me and uh, with my bladder when I kept going, racing to the bathroom, right? Um, and uh, muscle muscle tension, headaches, you know, ten tension in the, in the neck, tension in, in the stomach region, tension in the lower back. These are all common anxiety symptoms. Now, I hope this video has helped you understand that it's easy to perceive these bodily sensations and symptoms as being something serious. And to a health anxiety sufferer, there's a lot of catastrophic images that are involved when 
they feel that heart palpitation or they feel like they're having shallow breathing or they feel like they're is a lump in their throat sensation that they can't really swallow, right? Their mouth is dry or they have that headache and they believe it, that it's a, a brain tumor or, or maybe they believe that the pain in their stomach is something serious so they go to the doctors constantly. So look on the other side of that coin and that's a great start to your anxiety recovery. Now, thank you so much and thank you for subscribing to this channel. And remember, do not let anxiety define who you are. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.